Okay, Dave Warren interview, take two. It's on. It's on. Can you see it? <laughs> yeah, I can see oh. it. Honestly? Yes, 100%. You're moving and everything. Woo! <laughs> hey, that's why I stick to using the camera. Yeah, yeah. So for those who have stayed tuning in, there'll be a medal in the post. Congratulations. Yeah, and a sticker for me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, we'll just, we'll kind of, we'll just do the, um, that first question again, just to, um, cause then we've got something to, uh, build the whole thing up with. So before you started photography, Dave, for the benefit of the tape, <laughs> what, what did you want to be when you were a kid? Well, funnily enough, Andy, I wanted to be a softball star. <laughs> Can you move your camera slightly up because you cut the top of your head off? Oh. oh, there you go. Oh, slouch. There you go. You wanted to be a shop fitter. Never. <laughs> it never happens. Don't ask me why. Because don't, don't forget, years ago, when I was at school, you didn't have much choice. So yeah, yeah. I just had it. When the careers officer said, what do you want to do? I said, I wanted to be a shop dresser. As in, yeah. designing shop windows. Never happened. Thank God. <laughs> Any particular <laughs> types of types of shop? No, I, do you know, I don't know where I got it from. Perhaps I used to live, I lived in North London. So my parents would always drag me up to Oxford Street because that's where you went shopping. There was no internet. Yeah. I used to just look at the shop windows like people did at Christmas, like Hamleys. People used to go in their Selfridges in the old days, before electricity, gas lighting <laughs> and all that. And <laughs> I thought that was really incredible. Someone's been given a box of bits, paying things to plug in, and they've had to create, so um, that was it. So, never happened. I was a mechanic, but two years, gave up. As people to tell you, I, I don't know anything about cars. <laughs> so, the photography thing, were you taught that at college or by a friend, or have you just kind of, is that evolved from sort of pressing buttons and seeing what happens? <laughs> well, my dad. My dad was okay. very much into film. Yeah, he was into film photography. And uh, when he passed away, I inherited some 30, 35 cameras. Um, wow. I used to watch him. Um, and then I started off with a basic Russian camera called a Fed 4. Very, you know, built like a tank. You could drop it, throw it. But you, you kind of, just manual, completely manual. You know, you take, loads of, you take your photos, you wait for them, develop them. We used to do black and white, not colour. But you used to send your film off, all part of the excitement. I mean, you, you imagine saying that to kids now, where you take a picture on your phone, but you have to send it off and wait for it to come back. It just <laughs> it would amaze them, wouldn't it? It would amaze them. So, so it was my dad. My dad got me into photography. And, um, I mean, bless him, he, he passed away a few years ago, but he followed me from the start. And, and when he passed away, he had got every magazine and book that I'd been featured in and stuff all collected. So it, it's to him that I owe the pleasure. So, yeah. Oh, fantastic. And... The Volkswagen thing. What was your What was your first car? Where did the love of VWs come from? Oh right, that wasn't my first car. I was. Uh, oh, let's start with that. Uh, Fords. I was in the Ford. Ford. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. No, I had quite a. It was a Y range. So what? What year's a Y range? I don't know what year that is. Three. Eighty three. So I had my first car was a, a nineteen eighty three XR three I. Oh, very um, nice. Yeah, super snazzy, shiny, didn't do anything to it. Put a bit of a sound system in it, because people did. But, yeah, I used to drive it around, park it up. You know, people said, oh, you got you got your dad's car. I go, no, it's mine. So, XR3i, then I went on to an XR2, uh, and then went a bit more basic. The, the love of Volkswagens was basically, it was when I was married. I mean, I don't know if I needed a hobby. I didn't have a shed. <laughs> So, so it was kind of, one. yeah, yeah. So I bought one, which I still got. And um, um, yeah, I wanted a. It's like like with the XR3i. I wanted an XR2. Ended up buying an XR3i. Uh, I wanted a Beetle. Always wanted a Beetle. Ended up buying a camper van. So <laughs> and I kind of followed through everything I brought has not actually been what I've been looking for. But you know, some good choices. So, yeah, what was, your, what was your first Volkswagen then? Uh, so the first Volkswagen, a 1972 Devon Bay Window. And did you say you still got it? Still got it, yeah, yeah. I kind of, 
it's one of them I don't know if to it sat in a barn for 15 years and it had so where the green mold has grown on it and it's just obviously obviously but the mechanic that had it said that it was one of the driest bands he'd seen because he used to take the measurements off him for the door closures and everything so it just looks ratty but not full on rat it's not desirable rat it's um yeah a bit yeah. on the people still got it so uh, i find it hard to let them go once i buy them <laughs> So what what else have you got in in the collection the Dave Warren collection? Dave Warren collection. Well, we've got the uh, we've got the sixty double cap, the split screen. Yeah, doesn't go out much now. Still got that. Um, I just got rid of the Beetle, the first Beetle that I bought. I've done an exchange on that. Um, I've got a nice white one now. The former Vintage Speed uh, Promo Drag Racing Beetle. Okay. Ended up. Doing a deal and buying that, so that's super shiny and dumb. That's sat in the garage with camera over it. And a 1970 Carmen Deer, which oh, very nice. I didn't intend buying, I had someone knock on the front door, asked me if I wanted to buy another old car. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, I had to say yes. So, Takes a change from Tupperware. Yes, Takes a change from Tupperware and Avon and all the rest. Oh, what have, have you gone for out? I, I said it makes a change from someone trying to sell you Avon or Tupperware or something at the door. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, I didn't know, the guy didn't know what it was. And I thought this okay. was someone with a scam or something. He basically said, oh, there's, I've got, there's an old car, if you're interested. It was his partner's, and it sat in the garage for 30 years, in her father's garage. And, wow. and they needed to move it on, so I went to look at it, and the deal was done. So, yeah, but um, it's waiting to go off to the... You know, have the treatment done on it, so re everything. You don't have to say, did you buy it for an obscenely cheap price as well, or were you, were you kind of a gentleman about it? Andy, why have I I've lost your volume, man? Why have I lost your volume? It's one thing after another, isn't it? <laughs> um, did, you, did you get it ridiculously cheap? Oh my god, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they've been offered a thousand pounds. A thousand pounds for it. Yeah. And, um, I've probably had it, oh god, time flies, maybe three years now. Um, and I didn't want to insult them, I wasn't in the market to buy one. So I basically said, um, you know, I've got £2,000, um, yeah. which was saved up to buy the interior in the T5. Because um, yeah. when I used to work for you guys, I didn't have an interior. So yeah. I'm saving up to buy that, and I just said, I've got £2,000, it's not an insult. And um, because they knew what I did and where I travelled, they said, we want you to have it. So. Wow. Um, I asked them if they were sure like 15 times. I said, Are you sure? Are you really sure? This man wants you to have it. So that was it. But yeah, acquired. Well, you can't say no. <laughs> well, no. I mean, yeah, I'm just, I'm just conscious that the fact that £2,000, um, at the time I showed people photos and they, they were said, like, you know, it's, it's five and a half thousand straight away as it is. But, um, it hadn't driven for 30 years. I had it two years and then took it for its first long drive. It, it drove fine. So, new brakes, new fuel lines, obviously. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fine. Engines, just original and sweet as anything. So, yeah, testament to VW, isn't it? Cool. So, have you still got the T5 as well then? Yeah, still got the T5. That's my daily driver. Lovely. <laughs> so, yeah, daily driver and uh, best of all, sleeping in the back of vehicle. And have you done uh, the interior? Yes. Yeah, the interior. <laughs> yeah, all the interior stuff. Uh, a bit of comfort. I need it. Getting old. <laughs> so, are you a photographer full time now? Have you ever done photography full time? Yeah, I, I did. I did. Um, probably, maybe two thousand, two thousand nine to. 2018. I don't know. I was with you guys for two years, wasn't I? So, but um, it was yeah. It was. It's not that time. Full time. It's it's it, it's not. A, I say to people, it's not a it's not a career to have a sizable mortgage or, or rent somewhere. <laughs> you know, um, I was I was fortunate that well 
fortunately not fortunate, when my father passed away, I had, had some money. So it allowed me to do my dream, which was to yeah, travel yeah. from basically one shine to another, meeting people all over Europe. It was just um, just incredible. So, yeah. Um, but the thing was, I found that I was only working March to October. So what would I do in the winter months? Yeah, yeah. So now, now I work as a maintenance man as well, just in some care homes. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, that's Monday to Friday. You know, I can have whatever weekends off the want. So, and then I'm at the back of the show. So it works. Cool, cool. And so, yeah, obviously I mentioned earlier we worked together and you're sporting a, a vintage VW Heritage t-shirt. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for uh, representing us on the... <laughs> I've only thought it, Andy. I will give yeah. it back. And then you've got to change the name on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, d doing, what, doing what you do, does, does work come to you or have you got to go looking for it? It's a, it's a mixture of both. It's a mixture of both. Um, Usually if someone's got something like a renovation project, they come to me because, uh, well, not everybody, but people do, because they know the amount of magazines that I can get placement in. Yeah. So every now and then I'll get a photograph, uh, a message, usually via Facebook, a couple of images saying, what do you think? And, you know, is it worthy of a magazine feature? Well, yeah, yeah. they always have to remember, it's never actually down to me. So all I do is say, yeah, it looks cool, it's brilliant, like what you're doing. But then I go to the editor of the magazine and say, what do you think? Yeah. So what I'm doing in that case, depending on what the vehicle is, um, I go for the best magazine I can. Because yeah. obviously it's everything. They put all that time and money into it. So we go for the best magazine. If it's not their thing, then we try the next magazine. But, you know, it's just, uh, you know, which we try, but it's not down to me. So I always say that to people that it's obviously not my choice. Um, but Facebook as well is brilliant. Every now and then, I try not to upset the clubs, but you might see me put a little post on saying we're looking for vehicles. You know, I'm very conscious of upsetting people, but it's kind of like another way to find vehicles. Because a lot of yeah. people don't think, of, you know, they've got an amazing vehicle, but they just don't think it's worthy of a magazine feature. And, you know, people say, oh, really? And I go, yeah, people would love to see what you've done and also hear the story. You know, if the backstory is slightly different, then, you know, magazines are really interested. So, but yeah, so it's a mixture of both, mixture of both, yeah. I mean, if I put a show, I walk around and I see vehicles, I tend to sort of yeah. do a double step, I walk by and I go, have you ever a magazine feature? Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll come from there. So, yeah, yeah, all angles, all angles, yeah. Cool. Um, how did you get involved shooting kind of the pin-up stuff? You've done quite a bit of that. Was that kind of a magazine request or do you have a model approach you or have you kind of just sort of done it off your own back? Right, well... <laughs> my, you used to be a model. Things very closely followed by the love of like, hot rods yeah and there's an american photographer called dave perry okay uh very famous for hot rod pinups one and two where he would take a car and a model and put the car and model in a situation you wouldn't expect you know he was kind of probably the originator that would be doing like the lady in a dress with an angle grinder cutting an old chevy truck yeah um, and I really liked his imagery, um, and it was one of the things that actually inspired me to do a calendar for charity, okay. but with that kind of footprint of, of an image. And he was so gracious that I got his contact details from his agent and emailed him, and we spoke back as a forwards. And he's yeah. never been to the UK as far as I know, but we, we got talking about it. I got sent him some of my first images and said, like, what do you think? give guidelines and he said well you know i did that but can i suggest this and yeah. that was the kind of thing that, that helped um <clears throat> i wanted to do it not really much for the magazines but for myself and yeah, i yeah. thought for a calendar it, they don't sell that way they, you know it works together a model with a car classic car is just do things of beauty isn't it in a photo so that was the inspiration and are uh, you still doing much of that or no, not, not really, not really. I, I tend to, the photography now, I kind of step back in a bit in the fact that I only really do work that's going to be published. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I do a few commissions, but and then obviously I can't post the photographs, they go straight to the owners. But generally, it, it's, it's for magazines, I've got the assignment, um, 
So there's a ring they say what they want. Each magazine has a different style. So it's kind of the vehicles now. Um, I never used to shoot P4s and T5s. Yeah. And it, was, it was always the thing that if we're going to show report, some of the editors would say, there's no modern vehicles here, no water cooled. And I go, oh, actually, do you know what it was? But I didn't buy them, I hadn't photographed them. So now, uh, yeah, hopefully Alan and BW Bus has uh, forgiven me because I did quite a few features for them, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, yeah, and I drive one, so yeah. But before, I used to go everywhere in my crew cab. The crew cab was there, it's been all over Europe, so the shows, festivals, and photo shoots. Oh, one day you'll be back in it. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's that outside. He it drives. It's on the road. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just um, there's a little bit of a ventilation in the seals both sides, but you know, nothing, nothing you don't expect. Um, what would you say the biggest misconception is about automotive photographers, or maybe photographers in general? Um, well, I think I think nowadays, I think. I think with myself, people have seen where I've been and what I've done. Uh, I mean, maybe if they see the camera equipment, you know, you can see what I've spent on cameras, but that's really not through the published work. That's because of my love of photography and what I do. So, um, money-wise, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it as a career if you were going to go into it to make money. Um, yeah. I'd have that as a sideline. Or, 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 widen your range of what you're going to photograph um you know i i've always said that if i if i photograph weddings or babies i'd make money but yeah, yeah. Really not my thing. um apart from my daughter um photographed at my daughter's wedding um as well as giving them away which was a bit of a feat but i you know it's still not my thing so yeah, yeah. Cars, it, it's not for the money it's, it's the whole scene you know what i've, what I've achieved and how i'm welcomed when i go places is actually more of a payment than the money. So, but that doesn't mean I don't want paying. So if there's any editors <laughs> want <watching. laughs> Yeah. Still need some fuel money. Just put the Let's fuel money. Write you down as freebie. Uh, huh? Dave, freebie. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a few. I've done a few. I, and this is not about the money, but you think sometimes in lockdown, when it was allowed, magazines were crying out for features. There was no shows. So the amount of vehicles they wanted to photograph, we ramped it up a bit. We would go off for three days and do three, six, seven, eight shoots over three days. Wow. Long, long travelling. And, you know, sometimes I've done 800 miles travelling, you know, and stayed in a T5. But that's yeah. a lot of fuel. And then when you come back, you do like two hours on each feature of editing. If you're writing it, you know, another hour and a half. So, as you know, it all adds up. But it's just, yeah. You know, we'll put some fuel in the tank and I'll go and photograph. Um. So, yeah, hi hypothetical, I guess. Would you rather shoot your dream car, say, in a supermarket car park or a boring car in a dream location? And any particular okay. kind of car or location you want to, you kind of really want to shoot? Well, the, the thing is with that, it's, I've always tried to not, you know, like, it's, some people, or it happens, it happens, but a vehicle might be photographed at a show. And um, as a photographer, when I look at them images, you can see people camped in the background. Yeah. You know, and the rail of hedges. I try not to do that. So it's an awkward one because I don't think even if the car was stunning, I'd do that. I would just say arrange it somewhere else. So answer to that question. I don't know. Like I wouldn't I probably wouldn't do either of them shoots, so I don't know how I'd answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I just I probably wouldn't do it. I try not to do it. And then, I, tell you, I don't always find the locations, but we have shot in some amazing places and some shoots coming up. Um, we've been in um, disused RAF sites, like oh, wow. hangers, you know, the bombed out buildings and that. Uh, on railway lines, we've got one coming up. Where ammunition store, store just outside Northampton was another one. But a lot of it, I must admit, is like with the owner's knowledge. Because I'm covering such an area, the first thing I do on the sort of pre lead up to it is say, do you know anywhere locally? And they yeah. go, what about this? And I go, that's spot on. And and they do that part of the work without me trying to get out of it. But you know, they might know someone that knows someone and it has opened some really you know decent doors to shoot at. Um, yeah yeah. No lo yeah location is um yeah it's fairly important isn't it really? 
and you don't want to yeah. be disturbed either halfway kind of through it or you just get set oh. up and then someone goes off you go and uh that's it that's it i normally say on my my sort of first communication is um i like something in the background like texture if you can find yeah. an old wooden shed an old brick railway railway arch disused building something it's got something in the background that's not distracting because the vehicle is the star um, yeah we've done another shoot i don't think it's been published yet um just like the side gap the careful okay and the owner found this location it is just an office block but it is pure glass but with a blue tint to it and a row of like olive trees with the ball tops on it and in the okay. background with the bus it just led away from the image and i thought it worked so so you know um any location really but i do say nothing we don't want anything that's got other people in it road signs yellow lines or anything like that any any distraction because i would yeah. look at that photograph and go that's a really cool photo it's a shame they didn't you know afterwards um, cool no I'm, I'm with that um uh, so um yeah i've got a couple of kind of photographer specific questions which kind of tries to make it sound like i know what i'm doing but um do you shoot on nikon or canon i know other brands are available but that seems to be kind of the, the big question <laughs> <laughs> now, I used to be Canon, as a Canon, 5D Mark II, that is still my point and shoot camera. That's the camera that if you see me in the beer tent in the evening, which does happen, uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> not always by the bar, because I like being by the stage, I really like being down where it happens. That one, that's been left on many a stage, uh, BW and Music Festival, that's my point and shoot, you can just pick it up all day long, you know, flash down shooting up, you've got a good image. So Canon was my starting tool. But Nikon really. I do I do Nikon. Um I don't know what we're running now. I've got D eight hundred, uh, and then the real pro cam camera the D three X. Massive, massive full frame camera. So it's probably Nikon. I think my lens stock, I've got more pro Nikon lenses. Um I found an association with them, so um yeah so it's probably nikon uh, but that's the only two i've ever used so okay yeah. yeah um is there a particular photography skill you wish you were better at oh that's that's easy i know that one <laughs> photoshop okay i wish i could master photoshop i use my age as a barrier and just say that i just don't work it out every now and then i think perhaps you should have a go home um, there is another another reason I haven't made a go is because basically for magazines and when I work for yourself, it is just get a clear image, isn't it? You don't want anything arted up, saturation, yeah, yeah. Whatever, so um I know with some of my images, especially front covers, the skies have been changed. Um uh, actually had the daughter in law take out some yellow lines for me. Um, yeah, because it was shot the shoot you got us, the one yeah. Oh, yeah well, <clears throat> yeah. yeah yellow lines couldn't do anything about it amazing backdrop but then yellow lines are there to stop him barking we got permission from the cafe to shoot but couldn't get permission to paint Thank over the yellow lines so photoshop but you know i will have another go when i get when i sit down for five minutes i have a bit yeah, of time yeah. you need like a lockdown or something like if everyone had to stay at home for a year you'd be able to learn oh, <laughs> i don't when I, when I retired so when i retired i was going to learn photoshop uh, learn to play the guitar and learn Spanish. Never happens. When it's gone. Don't you, even you play the drums, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not in a band. It used to be. It used to be. Yeah. When, I was, uh, yeah, when I was younger, North London, I used to be a session drummer in a recording studio. A couple of bands, very jazz funk. Uh, a bit more like the Commitments kind of covers and stuff. But never got anywhere. You never do. Um, I gave that up, went into DJing and earned far more money playing other people's records. So, but yeah. Um, have you got a favourite piece of kind of camera gear, a lens, or a setting, or something that you'd love to use, which maybe you could show us? Well, I tell you what I did. I went from I went from using flash guns yeah. to a proper studio setup. At the time, it was a, a real commitment because. I went for Len Carter and I basically got the catalogue, spoke to the guys at Len Carter and I said, like, I wanted to come on board. And then I basically ticked everything, every piece of equipment that was available at the time. 
So I've got the full blown studio set up running on battery packs. It's been superseded now. You know, you get portable head units where they've got like a battery, like a, a battery drill that sits in the back. These yeah. things are running off basically a 12 volt disabled scooter battery. Yeah, yeah. With settings on it, and, and you can run two lights off each unit. But they just, they, they light anything up. The, the power that they can give off and lighting. Um, so I think that was the biggest jump. I went from Trino Achiever image to just going, this is going to work every time. So, yeah, it's a bit of a cart round. And sometimes I think, oh, I wish I went easy option. But it just works. It's just, yeah, worth every penny. So, Good bit of advice. Um, and yeah, if you're going to shoot, I always go manual. Go manual. Um, if you're using flash guns, as for top of the snow, you can only go up to 250 for a second. After that, it doesn't work. Um, and then just play around with, yeah, aperture. So until you get what you want, what you're trying to achieve, a darker, moody image or, or full light. So, yeah. I shoot JPEG and more, so I've got both options. Each for your memory cards. Um, always try and run my memory card for a shoot and never go over the top of one, so that gets put in the camera bag. But I scan it really. Try lots of, uh, take lots of point glass. It's digital, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't go wrong. Um, you've done your fair share of show reports for kind of, yeah, loads of magazines, really. What are, the, are there any particular events you've kind of really missed over the last year or so? And, and, why have you missed them in particular? I think, I think for me, <clears throat> the law of European shows is the attraction. Yeah. Uh, well, we miss Keshish um, every four years. And yeah. For people, if anyone's heard about it or been, it's just, it's incredible. I think the last time I went, um, five years ago now, they, you know, cars have come from 45 different countries. Wow. Been sent over beforehand in containers and trailers to be on display. And, and so that is a show to go to. Maybe more for the purists, but tie that with something else, you know, a visit to Wolfsburg on the way back or something. Um, so we missed that. Um, European bugging. A lot yeah. of time for that European bugging. Pretty much been there from the start. Um, you know, just as a photographer, they always make you feel welcome. It's just, just incredible. You know, it's, it's an honour, you know. I don't, that's going on the show, I don't need paying for because it's just a little to be there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Spark, the bug, that's another yeah. one. John Marie and the guys, yet again, they just make you feel like part of the family. Um, you know, help out as much as we can when we travel over. Um, and we missed that one as well. So, yeah. And I think also for me, I think going over to the European shows, as I call them, it's more the colours. You know, I think in the UK we're more van culture. Yeah. Um, but certainly when you go to Belgium, I know they're having problems like with the, the classification of the classic historic vehicle now, but okay. that's when you see a young lad driving a, an oval or a split rear bug and, and it and it's nothing to them. You know, it's just they you know, it's normal. So I think I like that as well. Cool. Yeah, I we've not done not done any of those, I don't think. Got over from the Nove a couple of years ago. That was really cool. And also, you kind of see a different. You see a load of cars you've not seen before, don't you? It's one to see them in the magazines, but if you see them kind of up close and all the rest, it's just kind of reignites the spark a little bit. Yeah. Well, not the Wicked Brewery because that's uh, that's usually taken over by the English on the Saturday. I think you were there. Weren't you? I can't remember. I remember seeing. Yeah, you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um. What would you say your biggest or your best photography achievement to date's been? Is there a particular uh, feature you've done or kind of cover or whatever you've got that you kind of like that's or person you've met maybe or whatever that's kind of up there? Wow. <laughs> oh well, well, I think achievement for for that the day born images brand uh, evolved was was doing the calendars for charity. Um, at the time, I wanted to give something back. I'm yeah. just you know for. I just, just felt this great honour for just being a guy with a camera that 15, well, 15 years ago I was first published. So let's say 18 years ago, I used to go to a Volkswagen show with a camera, walk around, take photographs. I didn't know the organisers. 
oh, I used to ask who organised the show, could I get an email, could I get a card, and I used to send my photographs to the yeah. shows. Um, so that kind of escalated, and then being published, the involvement of asking if they could use some of my images early on, um, I just felt such an honour that I wanted to do a calendar for Brad's Pinot Cancer. Okay, yeah, yeah. calendar. So the models would come on board. They basically gave them time free, the vehicles, the game they used, um, the design, um, everything. We all came together. I put the money into the calendar, the initial cost. So I think doing the calendar was the main thing. Um, I did two, um, but it, it cost a lot of money to do an A3 calendar. So um, we'll have to do another one. Every now and then I get an email. As far as there's Australia, you said about there, um, just saying, is there another calendar? Did you miss one? We've got the first yeah, yeah. two. Well, no, sadly, only the two. Uh, so I guess I guess that's the day one image brand is the achievement. Um, I think mixing people, I think we managed to get over to California um, before lockdown. And to meet the guys, in my mind, like the true legends over in California, um, the Slave Brothers, yeah, uh, the Lightning Bug, um, Ron Fleming, you know, to sit down and have a meal with Ron, Dino Dom, the compare from um, uh, EBI, spent the afternoon with him, um, got involved with Octo, very principally with Ron Octo, just that was that was just one. We went over there for holiday to meet a few people, um, very good friends from Joni from um, MP. Yeah. So we, we were always going to meet up with Joni and Dan, the former owner, my brother. We were going to meet up to them and have a meal. Um, we went to Hollywood for the day and stuff. But when people found out we was in California, it was Dave, not by meters, come and see us, we want to take you out. And for that, it's, again, it's just such a, an honour. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't expect it. Just, just take photographs and magazines, you know. So I don't know anything amazing or haven't done anything startling, you know. But um, yeah, so. That's kind of the two answers. That's it coming round. That's that's years of being nice to people and just kind of having time for people, and it kind of yeah comes round and uh, yeah pays you back. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, I always always have time for people. You know, I love talking Volkswagens. Love being in the field. Um, I'm not I'm not one that knows everything. I've got there's two shelves behind me with reference books. But every now and then I'm putting them out. So, you know, people that know far more than me, they can call out the technical spec if I'm doing a write-up. Um, but, yeah, no, I try, I try. And, yeah, you're right, it, it pays back, so it's nice. I appreciate it. No, awesome. So, okay, yeah, hypothetical, if your lottery numbers came up, what's missing from your collection? What would you, uh, what would you go and buy? What would I add to my collection? Yeah, or, or maybe you just finish them. But... <laughs> Uh, a triple garage would be nice. Yeah. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> a triple garage would be in. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, a basement garage. I don't know. I've always wanted an oval. Never okay. got an oval. I don't know why. You know, my other half just says, well, so, so, so tournament, myself an oval. I've always had an oval in my head. I've driven a few. Yeah. Uh, to fuck the shoots. Um, I've driven one on the M25. Um, one of Simon's with a roll cage in it. That was a bit daunting. So with semaphores, you know, semaphore in and out. Hopefully they've seen it. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, probably an oval. Um, oval and the other thing I like, I like the 15 window buses. Always had the thing. I thought I came so close to buying my sample once. This guy went over from America. I remember we got in trouble because I was looking at it. He put some American beer bottles, some American owl in in the back of it. We were sitting there drinking. He got told off by security. I know them, obviously glass bottles, but um, I didn't buy it, sadly. But um, yeah, probably a 15 window, or, um, or, or an oval. Yeah, not too extravagant. Maybe one day. Fair enough. That's cool. Um, I've asked a lot of people this, kind of gives us a, again, an in interesting answer most times, really. So, a hypothetical one if you could drive any car on any road with anyone, where and what and who would it be with? Uh, okay. Well, <clears throat> I think I think it's going to be. We're going to be back in California. Um, definitely in a cow look. Maybe an oval. 
Yeah. Um, so not Route 66, it's still okay, Pacific Highway, I reckon. And I'd see that coastline. Yeah. And, um, and that would be with my other half, wife to be, Jennifer. Um, cool. Yeah, I proposed over there. Okay. And, and we were to be married, but lockdown took that flight away and wasn't safe. But yeah, I think to do that. In fact, I was, I was going to at one stage. Um, go to America, buy an early Beatle, maybe try and drive it across America and kind of do a, a documentary on it. Yeah. And, and so they all take up on it and then bring the bike back to the UK. But that again never happens. Another dream. <laughs> so uh, I guess to round it off, you sort of you sort of hinted really, but what's the future hold? What's what's yeah. in store? I mean photography wise. I'm still doing it. Yeah, yeah. If anyone out there knows of anything, we've got a couple of stunning shoots coming up. Um, just keep it a little bit below the radar because they're, they're built. So when they're done, they'll be out. Um, one for a UK magazine, one for a Dutch magazine. So, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and hopefully the shows, you know, when it's safe, um, yeah, yeah. we'll be back home, won't we? Doing what we love. That's the thing. Because, you know, I think the entertainment industry and the shows, you've got to feel for the guys because I don't know if everyone realises how much goes into a show. There is so much cost beforehand uh, and everything that's involved. So, you know, that's the thing. Um, so, yeah, get, get back to the shows, enjoy the beat-ups and um, enjoy it again, isn't it? I think so. I think that sounds like a, yeah. The best plan, isn't it? Oh. Perfect. Oh, um, yeah, massive thank you for uh, for joining me, Dave. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, technical glitches on uh, both sides by, by the looks of things, but um, we got there in the end. I know. The people said it worked, didn't it? It's not, it's not like we didn't try it before. So, yeah, um, crazy. So, no, really good to catch up, Andy. Really good. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, hats off for, for anyone who's kind of stuck with us through, through all the... Uh, yeah, the ups and downs of internet connections. Uh, thank you very much. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed it and uh, got something out of it as well. Um, yeah, if you wanted to, if people want to look you up, you're on at Dave Warren Images. they got on Instagram and then on Facebook as well. Um, if anyone's watched this and thought they're up for a chat and obviously want a really seamless interview, which is obviously not too stressful or anything like that, then please drop us a DM, get in touch, and um, we'll put you in touch with someone who knows what they're doing. Um, Big thank you to everyone who's uh, yeah obviously been watching. We're going to be saving this to Instagram TV. We'll get it onto Facebook. We'll get it onto YouTube. Um, and yeah, you'll obviously be able to kind of scroll through that, catch up with any bits that you've missed. Um, yeah, please give it a like, drop a comment, tag a mate, do a share, all of those things. We'll see you all again soon. Thank you very much, Dave. Have a good afternoon. Cheers, thank you. Catch you again soon. Cheerio. Bye-bye.